So, would you like to use CBDLC and ACARS function in the Flight Factor 777 V2? Well, we're going to show you exactly how to connect to Hoppy or say intentions and to get messages with your controllers. To connect to Hoppy or say intentions, we need to go through the menus of the EFB and we're going to first go to external services, ACARS CPDLC services, and here you're able to enter in the data. Every time you want to connect to Hoppy, so you want to use Hoppy or say intentions for ACARS and or CPDLC functions, you always need to select the connect to ACARS CPDLC. Here you can choose between the different servers that you would like to use, whether Hoppy or Say Intentions. Here you choose the network that you are flying on. And then you can connect to the ACARS and CPTLC servers. You can also choose to filter messages to only get them from ATC. And then of course the logon code, which you need to insert here, for any of the servers that you have selected needs to be inserted as well, as well as the call sign that you will be using. So we're gonna go ahead and connect to our ACARS slash CPDLC servers. I'm happy with the settings I have here. And now I should be able to send and receive messages. To access the COM menu, we simply select the COM push button here, and we can see that the menu now appears. You can now navigate through all the different menus and do all the different requests that are simulated. For example, we can do departure clearance requests, ATIS requests, and a little bit more. And with ATC, we can also log on and then do special requests as well. Just note that even in real life, CPDLC may not be used unless you are flying at a certain altitude, depending on the area that you are flying in. So just keep that in mind most of the time it is above or in RVSM airspace, so flight level 285 or above. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you do get a denied, that that is probably because you're not within the airspace to use CBDLC. So let's go ahead and try a ATIS request. Now this will heavily depend on whether or not somebody is even online on VATSIM or IVAO or any kind of network you've selected in the EFB. In order to insert any data here, we simply need to use the MCDU. So let's go ahead and head down. And we're gonna plug in the values that we need. So I'm currently sitting at Riga. Insert that, and then I can send the request off. Any new messages that arrive, then become available on the new messages tab. And we can then select the message we would like to display. You can see this ATIS is not available because currently nobody is online to provide us that data. So we select cancel and no more new messages are available. If we need to review messages, we can go to review, go to received, and we can review all of the messages we have received in the past. So. Um, somebody just went online, so let's go ahead and take a look what an ATIS request can actually look like. Well, again, we'll put in our airport. And we'll select send. And with the new message, we can review our ATIS information. So let's do a departure clearance request. We'll select departure clearance, and we need to enter in our information here. Again, we're utilizing the MCDU. Our facility is Riga, and we are at gate 305. We will send that off. And once the controller has sent us the clearance, we should get a new message. 
So we got a new message. Let's go ahead and review. Go to new messages. And we initially get a departure request status message, letting us know that clearance has been received from our origin airport. We can just simply cancel that. And then a few minutes later, once the controller has processed our request, we will get the PDC hopefully, which in this case is as such. We're cleared to Vienna via the barrel to Foxtrot departure, climb 4000 squawk 4147 QNH 990, and then request startup on 135.1. We can normally accept this message. If it doesn't work on the lower ICAST display, we can accept it through the push buttons here. So let's go ahead and select accept. And that should then be sent over to the controller so he knows that you have accepted his PDC. Just note that if you do not accept the PDC in time, you will get a message such as this, where a failure of no response basically makes your PDC obsolete that you have received and therefore you must revert back to voice communications and re-request your clearance. So let's take a look at how we can connect to ATC with CPDLC functions. First, we need to go to the ATC menu. We're gonna go on to log on status. And here's where we need to log on first in order to get CPDLC requests or um, anything that ATC requires us to do. So we're gonna log on. We are currently still in Riga and their code is Echo Victor Romeo Romeo. You will have to check this with each controller, what their code is and what they use. So we're gonna select that in here. Our flight number is checked and correct until number is as desired. And we're gonna go ahead and send that off. So we just got a new message. Logon has been accepted, which is perfect, which means we are logged on to CPTLC. Just note, I've done it a little bit earlier than you are normally allowed to simply for demonstration purposes. So now with CPTLC connected, you can do all sorts of different requests if you desire so, or ATC can even get you some direct twos, for example. He says that we need to proceed direct to Stuvgi. We accept. We also have another message that this is our current unit. And so we're gonna go ahead and apply that. We're going to go direct Suvki as he directed us, and that should be good. Again, we can do requests as we desire as well. Any kind of requests that are available to us here and are simulated at the moment. For example, let's do an altitude request. I would like to request an altitude of flight level 390. Plug that in. I'm going to go ahead and send the request off. Once ATC has processed the request and either accepts the request or not, you will get a message which you can then apply to the aircraft. So that is how you use CPDLC in the Boeing 777-V2. We do hope you enjoy the video. If you have any additional comments, questions, or concerns, feel free to join our Discord, which there should be a link in the description. and. We are very active there and try to read anything we can.